In today's video we're going to be taking a look at an all new product from Eashin and it's their version of the scene whoop. So there are a lot of things to cover today and also talk about such as its flight performance, also how does it compare to the other ones in the market and is it a great deal or not. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's go ahead and cover the accessories they do provide you. Now they provide you with two sets of propellers, which are gem fan, which is proper propellers here. And they give you two sets of gem fans. And these are the ducted 75 millimeter three blade propellers here. They are somewhat durable, which we're going to cover in a bit here. And these are actually really, really great in the overall experience. And I'll explain what I mean as we go along here. Now you will see some damage on this, which we're going to get into in a bit here. Now, some of the other accessories they do provide you is they give you these as well. These 3D printed parts right here, these are little extra ones. So you can convert this into a DJI setup, which is really nice. This would be for the antennas back there. And this would be back here to have the DJI air unit standing up, not the Vista, the actual DJI air unit. Now, can you place a Vista in the back? No, it doesn't have double mounting solutions. So this doesn't have a double mounting solution, so you won't be able to fit Vista. So if you wanted to go the DJI route, you're gonna go with the full-fledged DJI module here. So let's put these to the side. They also do provide you with this right here, which kind of is like a universal adapter, and they give you the screw right here to mount any type of GoPro or and or action camera. However, they also do provide this one right here. And this one is basically meant for a GoPro session, but I was able to use my GoPro Hero 8 on it. And how did I do that? Well, very simple. I just undid the screws and I ran one of these battery straps under it. And that's it, I was good to go. And I actually used some of this right here. I got these from Bango. These are these anti-slip pads. They're really, really great and very cheap. And they give you a ton of them in a bag or in a box, I'll have it linked down below. Definitely recommended here. So I did have one here and it kept everything pretty good and uh, damped as well. So that was really nice into that perspective. However, if you are going to use this for a GoPro Hero type set camera, such as this one, there is something you need to take into consideration here, which might happen to you. I highly recommend you add some sort of a washers. So a washer before it goes into the 3D printed part, because in a hard crash, which happened to me, these can actually just pop over the uh, screw here with the weight of the GoPro and have it hanging out and you might lose your GoPro. So I highly recommend you add a washer right before the 3D printed part and then put in the screw and you should be good to go into that perspective. That's my recommendation here. And again, this does fit a GoPro type session through here if you needed that. So now they also do provide you with two battery straps, which are pretty good and I did end up using them. And they also give you an adapter for the USB so you can actually reach that in there. So you don't have to take this whole thing apart, you just put it in plug it in. I misplaced it, but I'll find it later on. But anyways, they give you the adapter. And what's really nice is some of these companies, when they give you the adapter, it actually goes to the bottom and it's pretty annoying to have the wire there and to have it just standing up like that here. Now they actually thought of the adapter. It goes up, so it's very easy to plug in and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the frame and the overall execution and show you what I like and what I don't like about this. Now I really do like the 3D printed parts here. They even have everything prepared for you as you need and they also do provide you with the antenna needed and you do have an XM plus radio in there. Binding is pretty simple. You're gonna have to go like right about here with some tweezer 
push it in and then plug in your USB and you should be able to bind. So that's really nice ease of access. All of this was provided again, which is really great. And if you had a crossfire, the 3D printed part is already available to put either an R9M or a crossfire, which is very useful if you wanted to change out the receiver. Now the overall frame design, I think uh, they went to Flywoo to OEM this type of frame for them because I know I think they have a pretty good relationship here. Now there's something about the Flywoo frame that I really, really loved more than the iFlights, uh, which was it used carbon fiber plates that went inside these foam pieces and it kept it from getting into the propellers and at the same time you don't have this shitty uh, plastic or PLA or 3D printed part constantly cracking because this is one of the worst thing that always happens with these is this right there. This happened in a couple of crashes and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, it's, that's the only thing I really hate about these types of frames. However, they give you one uh, spare one right here and they are pretty flimsy. I'll show you how flimsy they are. They're all, they're all like that. All of them are like that. So I'd highly actually recommend you remove them. You don't really even need them. So you could just remove those. And uh, I think you should be good to go into that perspective because the standoffs here keep the foam out of the way. And it's easier for the propeller to cut the foam than to actually start cutting the plastic, as you can tell right here. And this is the type of thing that will happen in a crash. Oh, and also another thing that happened to me was, this is something I recommend to every single pre-built quadcopter you purchase, is to always double check your motor screws and every other screw look i already seen a screw here i had two of these screws come off and that explains the cracking there so always double check your screws before you go flying especially if you got a pre-built quadcopter it is very very important here it could actually ruin your whole quadcopter in some sort of a crash for example maybe the motor came off cut the wire shorted out the esc and then you screwed up your whole esc and you don't want that so just check your screws always check your screws or you'll get screwed all right <laughs> now let's move on so before we dive a little bit deeper into here let's go ahead and discuss the comparison between the current ones in the market now this is by far one of the best price to performance ratio pricing whatever you want to call it out there and let me explain why for example we have the iFlight I think it was called the Bumblebee or the Green Hornet now the Green Hornet was not as powerful as this one it felt a little bit more sluggish this one was actually doing quite well with the wind which was I was, I was actually quite surprised at its performance with the wind which I really loved and it also slightly outdid the Flywoo Chaser's performance which is another thing I loved because sometimes you can't control the wind and you might need a little bit of wind resistance and this handled just fine in that and I was very happy and you'll see the raw footage towards the end of the video. Now this one is the same around the same price as the iFlight Green Hornet however for me this would be the obvious choice for a couple more reasons. One is the video transmitter is an absolute beast compared to the other ones I've tested from Flywoo and also iFlight. So the video transmitter here that is put into place is an absolute monster. It goes up to 800 milliwatts and it has pit mode. However, I was flying around 200 the whole time and it, it just outdid everything else I used, which again is very, very useful. Now also the battery execution is superb, which is really great. I didn't have to worry about the propeller going or the wires getting into the propellers. So in terms of execution and fiddling with it, it was really great. I didn't have any problems with that. Now, if we move down to the flight controller and ESC, it does get kind of interesting for flight controller. We actually have an F7 also with a barometer and also memory for black box logging, which is really, really great especially for 180 bucks, this is quite a freaking deal. And uh, so you'll be able to add a GPS and also have the altitude if you ever needed that, you could just stick that GPS back there. And if we even take a closer look on the inside, we do see we have a low ESR capacitor. I had no video and I don't remember any, but you'll get to see the, the FPV footage. I didn't have any FPV noise that really bothered me or I didn't even notice to be honest. And for the camera, they're using a proper camera here. They are using a Runcam Nano 2, which is a proper, proper camera. So that is, again, really great to see from Eishin. They are actually trying to make proper products here. And for the antenna, it is, or for the receiver, it's using MMCX. So if you wanted to replace that with anything else, you can easily do that as well. Again, a really nice addition here. Now, the whole stack is 20 by 20 and the ESC is rated up to a 6S. However, this is the 4S variant. Flight time, I think, was a considerable 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I'll have that flash somewhere once I go over the footage and double check that. But I think it was around 2 minutes, 30 seconds to possibly 3 minutes. Don't really remember, but it'll be somewhere there. 
Now for the motors here, we have 1507 3600 kV uh, motors for three inch propellers, obviously. And uh, they seem to do pretty well. This is a new design of their motors here. And they were pretty powerful. I really did enjoy them. And I was able to get a bit more speed than usual. Uh, for example, it also outdid the Hollybro scene group, in my opinion. And this is one that I would actually keep. And I am going to keep. And I actually enjoyed the Fly scene group. And I really hated these scene groups because they're so freaking sluggish. But this one was a real joy to fly. And it's very cheap. It is by far, again, I highly recommend that it is the best price to performance scene whoop you could currently purchase online i don't think you're going to be able to find anything that performs as good as this one now obviously if you want to go dji route that's a completely different story but they also have you covered if you have your own stuff which again is really really nice here now when you grab the frame overall rigidity is very rigid there is no flex which is something really really nice here and uh, I wasn't really expecting from an Asian product, but they've actually done this right this time. However, I do wish they've figured out a way to add a 20 by 20 mount back here, or maybe right here. That would have been really nice if you wanted to add something extra or modify something. For example, Cadex Vista, and even the receiver is tucked in in a proper place where you don't have to really worry about it. And well, that's all I really got to say. All I can tell you is I would highly recommend this. I would actually give this a 9 out of 10 for... Every scene whoop I've flown, especially because of the price, is insane as well, and the performance, and it is definitely recommended in my book. And you'll always find these replacement parts if needed for a pretty cheap price, which again is really great to see here. So I'm going to leave you guys with the unedited version of the flight so you can see its actual performance and decide for yourself. The beginning part of the video was done with the same footage, but with real steady go uh, smoothing out the video. And everything is linked down below if you could check those out. Those really support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I 
I said.